Hello everyone and welcome to my new video. As you may or may not know, it is incredibly hot here in the UK right now. It's so fucking hot. Everyone is grumpy at how hot it is. In true British fashion, everyone is talking about how hot it is. Oh my God, it's so hot. People are doing genuinely eccentric things in order to cope with this heat, such as dangling their legs out of a window, you know, to try and catch a breeze. Taking five cold showers a day. We're just not used to it. We're not used to these extreme weather conditions. I think it might be so hot that I could probably cook an egg on my forehead. That's how hot it is, I believe. So I will be shooting this video in my pants because it's just unbearable. And I've got a fan under the desk blowing up, up my bits, you know, and so you're just going to have to make do with that. There's nothing, if it comes down the mic, I'm sorry, you did, like, you're just going to have to make do with it, okay? Don't go jumping in the comments like, oh my God, I can't believe you didn't, like, gate out the, the fan noise on your mic. That's, what the fuck, mate? That's so unprofessional. Like, unsubscribe, I'm unsubscribing. I'm out of here. YOLO. Okay, mate, it's not an airport. No need to announce your departure. Anyway, so what is this video about? Well, have you ever wanted to make music, but sometimes you just can't be bothered? You know, it's so hot outside. Oh my God, it's so hot. And, you know, you just haven't got any ideas. And sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's just hard to make music, you know? Like, oh, music, making music is so boring, so tedious. Oh my God, I have to think of things to do. I have to make decisions. I have to make notes happen. I have to make music, motifs, memorable themes well, I'm going to show you how to do it without really doing anything and just by pressing a few buttons uh, or indeed actually doing nothing at all and just getting able to do it all. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a melodic phrase generator using a combination of some of the probability features in Live 11's MIDI clips and also some MIDI effects processors to basically create these sort of sporadic aleatoric flurries of musical data for which you can then casually browse and go, this one was good, I shall appropriate that and take all the credit. <laughs> Basically, we're going to create a kind of chain of events that will generate us some musical ideas that we can then decide uh, whether they're good or not. And uh, hopefully it'll be very useful and you'll enjoy it and we'll have a very nice time. Right, so let's get started. Uh, I'm just going to pull in electric here onto this MIDI track and then I'm going to create a new MIDI clip and I'm just going to draw in um, like some notes here like this and then I'm going to ping open the chance lane here and I'm going to maybe say the first one can have 90, 86% chance the other ones can have slightly less let's say 50 let's actually go less that's 35% chance okay so let's have a listen to that okay so that's kind of not very interesting in itself that's just playing one note uh, intermittently. Yeah. So where can we start? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my good friend, the expression control here. And I'm basically going to use this to sort of randomize a lot of MIDI effects in order to kind of wibble wobble the MIDI notes into something that might have some musical meaning. Let's see how that pans out. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in the note length and I'm going to take this top row here on the expression control, set that to random and map that to the length of the note length device, but maybe not entirely. Uh, let's say map it to from zero, let's say map it from 10% to let's say 60% and let's see what that gives us. So already it's kind of doing something that's a little less repetitive. Every time a new MIDI note comes in, it's going to randomize the, the length of the MIDI note. Isn't that interesting? So then we need to get a little bit more juicy. Let's bring in a chord. And let's just, none of these matter. Let's just set that one to three, that one to five, this one to 12. Or it, it actually doesn't matter. Um, I won't bother with that one. And then I'm going to pull in the random and set that to 100%. So I'm fairly certain now that when we get a MIDI note, it'll randomize the length of the MIDI note, generate a chord, and then randomize the chord voicing. Not 100% sure if I've got these the right way around, but let's just see how we get on. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, Contempor contemporary. Yeah. 
Why is my tempo at 119.93? That's a very specific number. Right, let's give him. Okay. See, sometimes it does nothing. <laughs> <Which is, laughs> okay, right. Now let's pull in the arpeggiator. And let's just for now set the arpeggiator to uh, 1 over 16. And listen to what it's doing now. There we go. Yeah. Okay, so that still sounds a little bit random. So we need to pull in a scale. I'm going to pull in um, the Dorian mode because all the best music's made in the Dorian mode, isn't it? Let's face it. Okay. All right. So there we go. Already we can hear it's kind of... Yeah. There's a sense of phrasing to it because because of the spaces. Um, the, the fact that we're using some probability in order to instantiate the entire process means that sometimes the process won't happen at all. And that leaves some spaces in the phrasing. And good phrasing is really all about spaces, isn't it? It's the silence between the sounds that, you know, really adds something. So that's what we're kind of going with here by using some probability in order to trigger the process. Um, but... You know, we can still go a little bit further because we're using this expression control to randomize things. We can um, randomize some stuff. Let's say I'll just minimize the chord and the random here. Let's randomize the style of the arpeggiator. So we'll hit map and then I'll click style. And now, so the style has up, down, up, down, down, up, up and down, down and up. I mean, they are different. Up, down and up and down are different. Uh, converge, diverged, con and diver. I don't really understand the pinking up, pinking down. <laughs> anyway, so now it's going to change the style each time a MIDI note comes in. Now, because the the point that it's happening in the process, um, it's only the, the, the expression control is only responding to one note, but it's actually triggering an event that's going to create lots of notes. Okay. Mm. There we go. See, it sort of did something that had some personality there, you know? Oh, Steve Reich. Yeah, okay. Okay, good. But it still sounds a little bit robotic, so maybe that there's something we can do with that in order to make it just a little bit more humanised, have a little bit more personality to it. So let's um, try the velocity. Um, by default, my velocity device um, loads in this fully randomized state that I've sort of set up. So you have the output high at 64, the random at 64, and the mode at fix. And basically that means that every note that comes in is going to spit out a random velocity. So already that's going to create something with a bit of feel to it because the velocity is changing. <laughs> Okay, but that's still maybe not enough. So I'm going to bring in another note length. And I think maybe, hmm, what could we do with this? Um, let's maybe randomize that note length as well. So we've got a randomized note length at the start of the chain and one at the end. Let's see what that gives us. So we'll map that to, to that expression control. Ah, hello. Oh. It's like Ableton is trying out a keyboard in a music shop. <laughs> oh my goodness me. So maybe that high velocity is a bit aggressive for this instrument. Let's pull that down a little bit. Maybe decrease the voices on the instrument to something like six. Okay, so it's a little bit too sparse, so that's fine. We'll just increase the chance of these notes here, maybe to something like 50, oh, well, that's too much. Yeah, 50% exactly. Thank you. Right. Let's have a listen to that now. Okay, fantastic, Anna. And as ever, we can record this MIDI to a new MIDI track. If it does something that we think sounds really good, we've captured it for posterity and perhaps for future use. So really, it's just as easy as creating a new MIDI track and routing 
the MIDI from the instrument. So you can see that we have one electric and one electric here. So I'll set, and I have to set it to post effects. That's very important because if we do it pre effects, it's just going to record what the clip is doing. But if we go post effects, it's going to record what the, the clip is doing and all the MIDI effects in the chain. And uh, we can watch that happen in real time. Go. There we go. Look at it. Look at all that lovely MIDI. Okay. Yeah. That was good. That bit was good. That that was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I agree. Mm, not so much. No. Uh, maybe. Mm. Yes. Yes, I like what you're doing there. Keep going. Keep doing it. Keep going. Yeah. This is good, Ableton. You're doing a great job. Okay, that'll do. You get the point. So, yeah, it's good. It's good. So it doesn't really end there because, I mean, that I was going for something quite sort of tasteful with that um, to, to the meter. We can go com completely off the meter. Uh, let's disable the sync on the arpeggiator and then map another random uh, from this expression control to the free rate, the free running rate. And let's see what that gives us. Yes, off, way off the grid. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to maybe... I like electric. It's a good starting point, but um, the sounds get pretty samey for me pretty quickly. So let's get into some sound design with an instrument. Let's pull in wavetable. I don't really uh, give wavetable enough time, enough air time. Um, so let's just see what we've got straight out the bat with wavetable. Kind of nearly made a sort of Mario celebration sound just then. Didn't it? Oh my goodness me! Okay, so why don't we um, take the velocity that's being randomly generated and use that to modulate the wavetable position here? Let's go to the MIDI tab. And let's say, yeah, velocity to oscillator one position. Let's set that to about 50. And then let's set the position to about 50. And then we'll get a different position on each new MIDI note because that's being determined by the randomized velocity here. Yeah, look at it. You can see it. Okay, so that note length is maybe holding some notes for too long. So let's pull that down to... 60% or something, minimum of 10%. Uh, a bit more release, maybe. Crazy. Okay, let's um, let's maybe come out of the. Let's go back on the grid. Um, so I'm going to unmap the free rate and set this back to sync. And just see what that gives us. Okay, I think maybe we could have a little bit more. Give us a little bit more. Let's increase the probability here. Okay, we 
don't want I don't want too much um velocity to volume on this. So this is where I'm going to show you how much I suck at wavetable because I don't know where it must be here. So velocity to amp, yeah, let's set that to zero. Okay, right. Nice consistent notes, please. Okay, let's um, also randomize the steps and the distance on the arpeggiator. So basically, if you don't know what those do, essentially you can add notes on top of the existing note um, so many times and also via a certain interval. So the amount of steps is how many times you're adding a note on top and the distance is where those notes are being added. So currently that's like minus one semitone and it's on two steps. So it's going to add two notes on top of the current note a semitone apart. Did I just explain that right? I don't, I don't care. I don't think it's really going to make any difference. And it's so random now that it's like, I've kind of, I think I've kind of forgotten everything. And it's just so hot. It's so fucking hot outside. Yeah, so maybe I could sort of let's recap a little bit. So the, the note length, the randomizing of the note length essentially sets the length of time in which the arpeggiator will respond to this chord, this randomized chord. So that's why you get that sense of space, because the note length sometimes will be a long note, which means that it will hold the chord for a long time. The chord will be randomized and then the arpeggiator will arpeggiate around the chord and then go into the scale to make it well tempered. <laughs> and then when the length is very short, then you get a short phrase or nothing at all. So that's that's kind of the idea really. It's doing nothing in protest at me making it more plucky. Come on, plucky synth, be plucky. Yeah. Okay, let's just let's let's record what it's doing just for so we can look at it, do its thing. Oh my goodness me. It's a bit drunk. It's a little bit drunk, Ableton. Yeah, Ableton, I think you've had way too much. It's time to go home. I just quite like watching the MIDI move along. Okay, so basically, like, where do we go from there? So let's say that I like this bit here, this complete splurge of whatever it did here, and I want to use that again on my synth. Well, basically, the best way to do it is to just take that synth and duplicate it onto the new MIDI channel, and then we'll just listen to this one. Or let's say I like this bit here or something. Oh, that one was good. Some of them have like a kind of VHS ident, <laughs> 80s VHS ident type of thing about. Like that might be something that you might see before you're just about to watch like, I don't know, Transformers the movie or something. Maybe I should have called this video ident generator. <laughs> 
Okay, so basically that's all I have to say on the matter. So there you go. You can create little interesting melodic phrases by using a little bit of probability and a little bit of savvy mapping of the expression control to various items in this chain of MIDI events here and then put that onto whatever instrument of your choice and there we go that's it so I hope you enjoyed that I'm going to go and put this set on my Patreon now where you can sign up and download it along with everything else that I've ever put ever in there in my life not not all my life but since I've been doing it and if you want, you can also get some private Zoom calls with me if you want, if you want some help with your music, or you can hang out with other patrons on there. We've got a really nice crew of cool people on there. We love getting together and talking about Orteca and stuff like that, and we have a great time, and it's all really cool, and, uh, and, and all kinds of other things happening. So thank you very much. Um, it's really fucking hot. See you next time. Goodbye.